Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is the Porsche 992 GT3. Now this came out earlier in the year and a Porsche very kindly invited me to try it during the summer, but it was always on track. And I said, no, I really want to try it on road. Waited a little longer to try it out in the garage so I could really live with it. And I've had it about a week already. And I've also um, had a access to a 997 GT3. So an earlier generation of GT3, just to sort of see how far this car has come. And right at the beginning, I can say, it is a completely different car. The 992 introduced this um, front suspension, double wishbones. You've probably heard all about it before, but it is transformative to what we, how this car drives and how it compares to early generations of car. It's also bigger. Um, it's got the same engine, the four litre flat six, revs to 9,000 RPM. There's a lot more aero on it, all sorts of things. And it's a very different GT3 to previous generations. Let's go and have a closer look. I ought to just discuss price of this new GT3. The list price on a GT3 in the UK, 123,100 pounds. The total price on this car as spec, we'll go through the spec in a moment, 139,940 pounds. Let's call it 140,000 pounds. There's a handful of them. You basically, to get a GT3 in the UK, you have to have bought several Porsches over the last few years and then you might be offered an allocation. That results in a huge demand for the few cars that are registered in the UK and currently this probably has a value of £240,000-£250,000. A £100,000 premium at the moment on a GT3. It's come down to 100000 It was actually higher. Crazy demand for this car. And it's very recognisable as the new GT3 when you see it because of these sort of nostrils in this front bonnet. We'll open this in a moment, it's carbon. And that is actually how they vent oil cooler, etc. It's more successful at um, getting air through the, um, the radiator down there. To my eyes, I'm not sure if it's a visual success, but it is highly efficient and typical Porsche. The other thing I would just want to note on this car, this is sort of all plastic here and it is low. Um, it's about five inch clearance there. And if you were ordering a GT3, I highly recommend getting lift because on the first day I had this, I went into a car park and boof, it hit on its nose and it even hits um, speed bumps this car because a whole load of veins there's so much air going on on this car underneath here and it and it's only about a three inch clearance so speed bumps are an utter nightmare in this car so yeah front lift I highly recommend I also recommend if you're gonna lucky enough to order one of these cars get their new LED lights this professional um, lighting system it is extraordinary at night those headlights are the best I've ever experienced at night. Pure white light and then this automatic dipping when you've got cars coming towards you. Also on this car, well, 20 inch wheels are standard on it, but um, carbon ceramic brake discs are an option on it. I thought they'd be standard, but no, they are an option. A six and a half thousand pound option for those. And then at the rear, I can't go, we have the 21 inch wheel. This is just the same spec as you used to get on 991 GT3 RS um, wheel, but now a 21 inch and a 315 section tire sitting on a 12 inch rim, 12 inch rim. We're into sort of Kuntash land. The swan neck rear spoiler, a completely different design. And I actually learned something about aero. I now understand why we're getting to see these sort of rear spoilers. Basically, you don't have to have an aggressive angle on here to get downforce. All the action is underneath. And by putting the, the way that a spoiler is actually attached to the car on top, then you've maximized this area. And it's the vacuum created by this wing here that creates the downforce in relation to this little ducktail spoiler here. Very clever aero. And it, then, because it's not at a great angle of attack, it doesn't add drag, and you have a top speed of 198 miles an hour. You also have lots of Venturi things going on to here. It's very tricky on a Porsche to get management of air underneath the car because of the rear engine, and that's sort of in the way of any 
trick aero that you can do if your engine is up the front. So it's much easier to get a big rear diffuser on the car, not so if you're rear engined. I cannot show you the engine on this car because it, it just doesn't open up. There's a little um, flap here that if I open that, you can add water or um, oil, but that's your lot. You do not see this engine. It's gone like the Boxster series, Cayman series. One thing's, a couple of things to note on here. One, we actually have, this is a force vent. Force vents have arrived on a Porsche GT3. I never thought I'd see the day, but that is one of those. I thought it vented from the rear arch. No, it's completely sealed. It's just a styling thing. Um, maybe on the racer it is. And the other one, steamed up lenses. That hasn't cleared in a week and the front indicator is the same. And on the other side, yeah, it's absolutely fine. So I'm guessing that's a bit of an issue. I do like the way they do this raised lettering though on the 992, very trick. And then the twin outlet exhaust as seen on all GT3s. Another option you can get on GT3 now is carbon roof. Um, it's not actually on this press car. I thought it didn't have a heated screen, but actually it's got a very fine heated screen like you get front screens, etc. It's sort of invisible. But what is hiding in there is a big roll cage. This car has the Club Sport pack on it and it also has the optional um, bucket seats. So the full bucket seats, they are a £3,788 option and completely fixed, but weirdly have um, electric height adjustment on them but no rake or anything like that that's completely fixed and here we get a carbon bonnet at, uh, even on the base the gt3 car so you see that apparently it was due with those vents it was hard to do in metal i was told uh, and then you got a great big hole so reasonable practicality i think the only tool on this car is very hard to access behind the front seats because of that cage so there you go, a quick run around the GT3, but obviously what this car is all about is the driving. Let's take it outside now. You have to be a little careful getting in the car with these bucket seats. Um, they're quite aggressive, shall we say, on the side bolsters as you clamber in. Uh, it's always bizarre on a GT3, the way you sort of start it with what you think is the light switch. Well, that's how 992 is. And you met, yeah, inside a very familiar sort of scene, except for this gear change. Remember that funny little toggle in the um, PSG gearbox GT3? You get this strange device, which looks like a you know manual gear stick. It doesn't quite have the quality of it, and you can obviously change manually with that, should you wish. What else is there? Yeah, that cage is a complete pain if you wanted to put stuff in the back. It's got stop start on it, as you can tell. It's got a bit of fan, I'll just put the fan down. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to be able to put helmets or something in the back of there, but it's a right game. You can actually, um, you could pull the seat forward and just about get something else in, but it's all a bit awkward. But it sort of shows the intent of this car, that it's purely track if you have the club sport, tick that option. Um, if you have the sports seats, there's two options of sports seats, four-way and 18-way sports seats, you um, don't can't get the cage. You can only have the cage if you tick the box for the full bucket seats, £3,800 or whatever it was. It's got cruise control in here, I notice. So yeah, typical, you know, uh, GT3, you have some of the toys that you would expect in this car. It's going to start it up again. You can have all sorts of dash configurations and I've got it at the moment, so I've got, yeah, clock, speedo, vehicle general there. I've, uh, yeah, if I press this, I can have different layouts, whatever you want. So that's the sort of track sort of layout. Press the show, I'll go back to that. Yeah, you can have endless fun on this. Uh, something that, a little surprising in it, I suppose, it only has a sport setting. There is no sort of comfort setting, driver mode normal but the chassis, sport or track, There's, as far as I can see, it's got POSM damper here. If I press that, I go straight to track. I haven't got a comfort option on there. Anyway, let's get going. It sets off like an auto, as you imagine, and it quickly goes through the gears. Now, I've had this car several days, and it was dry the first day when I got to know the car, and I thought, oh, I'll film it on the next dry day. 
Well, five days later, it hasn't had a dry day and the car goes back tomorrow. So we've got slightly drizzly condition, which is not ideal. Um, it's got Pirelli uh, P courses on it rather than Trofeo tyres. But uh, anyway, I'm going to head out, find some better roads and you'll join me in a moment. some differences with this GT3. First one, it's a bit more vocal, weirdly, than previous generation. I thought with the gas particulate filters, etc., it wouldn't be, um, the engine wouldn't, you wouldn't hear it so much, but yes you do, and I think they've tuned in more induction sound with this version, but I am having to shout. I am doing 60 miles an hour, and I tested it on my noisy bit of road, and it came out at 83 decibels, so it's the noisiest car I've ever tried on that a piece of road. Uh, yeah, it's constant, it never goes away. It's something that GT3s actually have always been a bit noisy, but this one, well, I mean, it's just enormous tyres on it, isn't it? 315 on uh, 21 inch wheels at the back, the lightness, the cage in the back sort of acting as a vibration ball perhaps but um, yeah it's noisy and the other thing god it's sharp on the hell it's it's beyond Ferrari and TVR sort of quick rack feel it's actually the speed of response it's I mean it's a normal speed rack it's just there's no slack whatsoever there's absolute mechanical uh, connection with the front wheels and you move a millimetre on here and the car instantly moves now got speed bumps here and these are the ones it cannot get over and I am amazed it's the first modern car I can think of that I've driven and hasn't been able to go over these sort of dimples in the road um, what you actually get we just edged up to one I can't really because there's cars around but uh, you edge up to one oh I've got the nose across and then somewhere mid in the uh, middle of the car it then catches so you back off and go around but uh, yeah, it's compromised. As I said in the garage, do tick optional nose lifts if you're very lucky enough to actually have an order in for one of these. I'm going to have to go in the middle there and do that. Yeah, but typical um, yeah, DSG gearbox, uh, PDK is a term in Porsche land, and 7 speed on this car rather than the 8 speed you get in all other 992s. The GT department don't require the sort of overdrive, sort of eighth gear is their argument, and it saves weight. And I have to say, the weight of this car at, I think it's 40, 35, is impressive. It's a bigger car, it's got all this tech, it's got this wider stance at the front with that, you know, new suspension up front. To actually come out at 14, 35, wet, all fluids, full tank, 64 litre tank on this, is impressive. There's no Italian leaving it in the oven for a week and let's empty the battery and the brake fluid out as well and let's spec those lights that we have in Brazil that are LEDs etc. No, 14, 35 kilos as you clamber in to drive it. But oh, the, ride, the ride quality over bumps and in my village and on roads like this, it, the spring rate of they say is um, double what a regular 992 is and you know it's the moment you're on UK pitted repaired rows in villages around the Cotswolds. God, it's tough. Seriously, annoyingly tough. And then you're in this sort of seat that's no wiggle and no, no sort of compression in it and you think, oh God, this is GT3. Anyway, there are some benefits to it as you'll see in a moment. It was so useful just having that 997 GT3 to hand the other day and just driving them back to back again. That was a really wet day as well. But uh, you just didn't have that sort of annoying ride quality beyond hard but harsh in the 997. I always remember PSM on that car gave it an amazing ride for its ability. Yes, it was tough. My dad would say, God, this car hasn't got any suspension of the 997, but um, he'd be shocked how hard this car is on a similar road. So that, yeah, 997, I always think a GT3 is a usable, it's 50% road, 50% track. And um, 
this one is very much edging towards track status rather than road. Got a proper glove box over there, you've got door pockets here, you've got in under here is a little place for your phone and a um, place to charge things up. The dash is quite high, but I can just see the mound where the headlight is, but um, and the chrono pack clock there ticking away. But anyway, I'm gonna come out of Burford and I'm gonna do my usual thing, just squirt up the hill. I have I haven't actually changed out, I'm in complete auto mode. There's the D limit side, let's see what happens. Black 
forest and on their beautifully surfaced roads. On the sort of roads I have around my house, it's a real struggle. It's a fight to get it down the road. And when, when I went out in the 997 GT3, it just creamed them. It had no issues at all with the road surface when this one was really struggling. Not a slight dislike, it's just the way it keeps getting bigger, the 911. I, I know it's inevitable, but um, it used to be this neat little nimble car and it's swollen in all directions. Oh, let's try around here. Oh, I don't that car. Let's try a second round here. Super slippery, amazing traction.